Hello and welcome to Capacity TV. My name is Saf Malik, senior reporter at Capacity Media. We're here live at Capacity Europe 2023 and I'm delighted to be joined by Curtis Linvix, CEO at Lynx. Curtis, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, the first question is around internet exchange points. Um, what are they, why do they exist, and what problems do they solve? So that's, I mean, it's a very broad question, it's a bit of history. Um, internet exchange points, or ISPs, uh, emerged in the early mid-90s uh, for two reasons. One was to improve network economics, to save on costs of long-haul costs. Um, back in those days, long-haul costs was even higher than it is today, of course. Uh, but all it then was also to improve the user experience, to keep traffic local. So before the IXPs in Europe, traffic between two countries in Europe could go via the US and back, which was high latency, very slow, and, and the IXPs were very much a way to improve um, performance. Uh, and that's how they emerged, um, they emerged, first in the US, eventually in Europe. Europe is today one of the most densely interconnected markets in the world. We have some 134 exchange points across Europe. And they really today help uh, improve the user experience and bring down costs, uh, improve network capacity and, and quality control, etc. And that's where the RXPs really came from. Uh, and what type of networks would typically connect to an internet exchange and why? So historically, um, when, when you're in the, in, the, uh, in the emergence of the internet in the mid-90s, well, not the emergence, but the internet as you know it today, uh, the ISPs consisted mostly of, of, of access networks because there wasn't really content as we know it today. Those of you who are old enough as I am to remember things like Alta Vista and, and very old websites, and Yahoo started coming up. Uh, they were all fairly centralized services uh, located in the US. So most of this was traffic was end user to end user or, or perhaps to the early uh, content providers, the local news sites that tended to be hosted by the organization themselves or the enterprises. And the, the capacity provided to those enterprises was the, the access networks. It was the, the, the BTs, the, the orange, you know, the, well, in back those days, uh, you had Telia and, and uh, Deutsche Telekom. And so they connected to the IXPs to exchange traffic between each other and to, to essentially keep traffic local already then because the enterprise, the, the content sat behind them. Uh, this has emerged, the, the, the world of interconnection, as you call it today, has, has changed and evolved. Uh, today, at the exchange point, we, we have historically, we saw in the, in the late 90s, the, the uh, emergence of content distribution networks like Akamai, uh, who started joining ISPs to improve the performance of content, and content became distributed across the world as opposed to being very centralized. This then in turn led to, uh, in, the, in the early 2000s, we started seeing network caching, uh, where content get cached in the access networks, and they joined the, themselves, the Googles, the the metas, the uh, et cetera, started joining the exchange points uh, to interconnect the content directly to the end user networks. And this has emerged today. This trend is very much continuing. We're seeing increasingly enterprise networks who has now started de developing their own policies and needs in, in delivering their content directly onto the exchange points. So it's really been an evolutionary journey from those early days to where we are today. And we see a lot of this has, has changed and it's continued to change. You've been in this industry for two decades. Um, what would you Just say? to three, actually. <laughs> wow. Um, what are the main changes uh, that you've seen in your time in this industry? So I think one of the things that I've been saying recently is that, as you say, I've been in this industry for close to three decades. And very much throughout that time, I feel that tomorrow had to some extent look like today or yesterday, right? It, it has been... Evolution has been you know, higher speeds, higher bandwidth. Um, you know, the, yes, the emergence of content has changed, but I think we are for the first time on a on a what we are watching right now, what we're experiencing is a a wholesale change of the industry. And what I mean by that is that interconnection has become ubiquitous. There is a lot of interconnection, especially in the developed markets. Less so, perhaps, in the and we are starting to see in the emerging markets also really building this up much faster than we in, in, in the mature markets like in Western Europe did before. And this ubiquitous interconnect is, is enabling a lot more services. We have people talk about everything from the metaverse to AI to ML. But more importantly, it's also changing how we see applications today on the internet. They're no longer the monolithic uh, applications. We can see uh, you know, compute on demand down to single algorithms, down to single instances being spun up across the network as 
and as an application needs data, I can go and collect that data, run the data analysis remote, collect the data back. All this very ubiquitous access is changing how we, we build applications, but also how the network behaves. If you combine this with a lot of the automation we're seeing, this is becoming a, a, a brave new world. You know, a little bit, all the, the promises we ever got from SD-WAN and, and, and software-defined networking some years ago, it's all of a sudden happening, right? And if you add to this a lot of the machine learning, AI, and, and metaverse, and you know, all, all other things you're talking about, I actually don't think we have seen the killer application yet, right? I, I think we, we are, we, we, we think we have seen it, but I think we, we, it's going to emerge on us as opposed to us uh, delivering it to the user, right? Uh, and I think that's fascinating because we're building a lot of these enabling blocks that we have been building them for some time. And for the first time, this is all coming together and we're starting to see the very early steps of this coming around. Right? And I think that the, you know, some of the games we're seeing are, is, of course, fun and, and you know, immersive gaming. Is, you know, it's great fun. We can, we, can, we can enjoy it. I don't think that's going to be the killer app. There's going to be something we haven't seen yet. You know, if it's some form of augmented reality uh, or similar applications, that's really going to drive this combined with this fact that we can move data or actually analysis of data very, very fast, right? And have these data exchanges across the network. All this combined is, is creating brand new opportunities if you haven't had in the past, right? And that's, that's really, I think, is the excitement that right, uh, right now happening. And looking at the IXP market as a whole, there's been so many changes, especially in recent times. What predictions can you give us for its future? <laughs> um, <clears throat> if I knew that, I probably wouldn't be sitting there. Anyway, uh, no, I think... We'll see um, a, a lot more. Uh, I think ISP is, always, let's say, interconnection in general, because that's what we're really talking about here. Everything from cloud access to enterprise to enterprise traffic, these data exchanges, uh, is going to explode very rapidly across areas that are probably not so well served today, like Africa, the Middle East. Well, Middle East is actually catching up very fast. But I think also the ecosystem in Europe and, and the US, et cetera, the mature markets is going to change. It's going to be, we're seeing, to some extent, we're seeing this, you know, my own version of the Gartner hype curve, right? We're seeing the enterprises really picking this up by themselves. And, and they're, they're, we're seeing a shift from where enterprises more used um, telcos as a black box uh, solution. They're the, the emergence of, of um, uh, software as a service or XX as a service or X as a service uh, applications is driving enterprises to have much more control over their traffic flows and their needs and their interconnection strategies. Uh, and they are taking that back home. They're only showing it into the enterprise. Uh, and that's driving a lot more demand on the IXPs. And that's really changing the IXP marketing quite fast. Uh, and that, I think, is also going to drive a lot of growth and interconnection in in places like Africa, Latin America, and, and, and um, Asia, Af uh, markets that haven't seen this, but it's going to happen at the same time in Europe, for example. So all of a sudden, if we're blurring the lines between a developed and a developing market, it is, it's very rapidly becoming the same market, right? And I think that's quite fascinating and, and really a big change. Assis, thank you so much for joining us on Capacity thank TV. Thank you for having me. Uh, and thank you guys for watching.